the Nigerian side packed with talent and this the national anthems to these names that uh, you've just been seeing Daniel Amakachi of FC Bruce, George Finity of Ajax, Efren Okoko of Norwich, Austin Okocha of Eintracht and Victor Ekpiba of Monaco who hasn't even been used in this tournament yet. And then you can imagine what power they have. Now, the Zambian national anthem. An emotional moment for the Zambians and something of a miracle that they got to the final after that terrible tragedy. And their captain, Kalusha Bwalya, said in a quote uh, yesterday, we'll say a prayer for our dead comrades before the match, but then we'll be on our own. Well, of course, they realize just how important this game is for them. As I said, the Nigerian side so replete with talent that even Victor Ekpiba, who's a very important man in French football and in the Champions League with Monaco, hasn't been used in this tournament because he says he doesn't get on with a coach. But take all these names I've been mentioning, Yakini, Amokachi, Finidi, Okuku, Okocha, and you can see they have awesome power up front. Nigeria perhaps don't have the midfield style of, say, the Ivory Coast, or indeed perhaps of Zambia here and the central defense isn't in the first flush of youth but these have proved to be of no great liabilities in this tournament so far the Zambians acknowledging their supporters in the crowd well I was talking to John Fashionu just before the game and of course John was very closely associated with the very charitable efforts that were made to resurrect the Zambian uh, football side it was he, of course, who appointed, virtually appointed, Ian Porterfield. He liked the way uh, Ian Porterfield approached the game, said he would be able to work with the African nations very well. And uh, indeed that is so. Ian Porterfield has organized them so well that they haven't conceded a goal in the tournament. So we've got a side which has proved itself defensively against a powerful attacking team. There, the great Pele signing autographs already. And as I said, we also have in the stadium Platini and Bobby Charlton. All the dignitaries from around the continent here. The president of the African Football Association, Ida Hayat, is here as well. The Tunisian president who will present the cup at the end. And we look back to that cup final two years ago which went into extra time and a penalty finish between the Ivory Coast and Ghana with the Ivory Coast becoming the champions by 11 penalties to 10 well I think uh, Clemens Westerhoff at the end there knows that if he loses this game he'll be on his bike I don't think the Nigerian authorities would perhaps uh, absorb the indignity of beating of being beaten by Zambia there, the player of the tournament as far as I'm concerned, Rashid Yakini. 
I don't know whether you've been watching our coverage in Eurosport or not, but he scored a quite amazing goal against Zaire. Uh, and I think uh, the great Pelly himself sitting in the stand would have been proud of it. A ball played into the penalty area, controlled it with the outside of his right foot, and then fraction of a second later with the same foot drove it into the back of the net. So that is the kind of quality this very brave, courageous and spirited Zambian side will face up to this afternoon. That's how they play. They've never won this uh, title yet. The Nigerians have won it once before. The referee, Lin Ki Chong, about to start this game. And off we go into the first half. Zambia, of course, in the green jerseys, Nigeria in the white. And back there, right away, the Zambian formation with the goalkeeper who missed the, the previous game, having been fit enough, past the fitness tense, James Philly, to get into the side again. He was very, very good indeed. So that is a bonus to them that they got him fit. Watch number two for uh, Zambia at the back, Chongo. He is a man around whom the defense swivels. Modern Malatoli uh, will be on the right of defense, Chiangi on the left. Litana right in the middle of the field. Sakala and uh, Kalusha will join him there. And up front, Sayeti with Chalumba Bwala and Malatoli. The other Malatoli just behind him, playing roughly that 4-3-3. And up front for Nigeria, of course, these two great attackers, Amakachi and Yakini. And Amoniki almost getting away there. Rather nervy start by the Zambian defense. But I think you'll find they're warm to the task very quickly. Easily beating Mali in the semi-final by four goals to them. Of course, Nigeria had that amazing penalty shootout with the Ivory Coast. And uh, appropriately, Yukini scoring the inevitable penalty kick, the one that really mattered. That's the man I was talking about, James Fury. He had a thigh injury. Managed to get him back into harness again for this game. A lot of uh, European coaches and scouts out here. Although John Fashner was saying he hasn't come across an English agent yet, which he finds rather surprising. Going away with their Equivern. Now, I think significantly again for Nigeria. As that's picked up by Amokachi. Fini D, it's a tempting one, Yakini. Where was the marking? And the goalkeeper, Fili, fumbling that. Well, having spoken, uh, spoken highly of this Zambian defense, quite astonishing that uh, nervousness. Malatoli fighting very hard in midfield, putting it out there, given support by Chiangi. I think that might be a corner kick. First of the game. And Zambia, I think, getting over nerves here, or at least trying to. Another corner kick. Back there in defense. Oki Chucho or Oche as he's sometimes called. The Dutchman coach of Nigeria looking on anxiously. The next corner. Rufai hesitating. Brilliant goal. Litana. And a shock start to this game. What I talked about, nerves. Surely this Nigerian defense suffering there. Look, a clutch of white jerseys, the goalkeeper on the line. 
He didn't go for it. And up went Lee Tanner, solidly into the back of the net. Four minutes gone. And surprisingly, Zambia in the lead. Wonderful jump by the defender, did very well indeed. Elijah Litana, his first goal of the tournament. And now Nigeria have got to come out. Pushed back there by Olise. Well then, quite clearly, Nigeria missing the presence of Stephen Keshi in midfield. He's on the bench this afternoon. He really is a captain of the side, Okafor, the substitute captain this afternoon. And Keshi troubled with a thigh injury as well. This is Nigeria fighting back on that. A thrust there by Amoniki, Emmanuel Amoniki, only 20 years of age. And one of the young crop of talent coming through for Nigeria. Well, I'm quite sure the Nigerian players are smarting under that blow. They didn't expect that one. Up and over, that's equaliser! The goal coming so quickly there from the man I was mentioning, Amorike. Five and a half minutes gone. Nigeria are back on level terms. A drooping header there should have been covered. And Amorike coming in from the left. Neat positioning and just puts it away I think it may have come off uh, Litana himself there, it didn't matter, it was bung for the back of the net and what a marvellously entertaining start we've had to this match two goals in the opening five minutes Well, I did say at the start of this tournament, I was a little bit worried about some of the negative play we saw. That was partly due to the organization of the tournament, which meant it was rather easy uh, for teams to read exactly what they had to do to proceed. And now in this uh, knockout from the quarterfinals onward, we've, we've had some marvelous games. Ghana against Ivory Coast, superb. And then the Ivory Coast against Nigeria, and now this one, two goals in five minutes. I think that will do any paying customer anywhere in the world as that defence looks slack again. And coming forward, Malatoli. Malatoli coming forward very strongly. The man who plays his football in Esperance in Tripoli. Little touch on there, Amakachi trying to get it, not seen much of Amakachi yet, nor of Yukini, but there's a long, long way to go. What I find about Nigeria is sometimes they looked extremely bland in midfield, and then suddenly they had these explosive finishes with Amakachi or Finidi or Yukini busting through in long runs. I think we'll see that again. And really, Zambia did need to hold out. That was a marvellous start for him there. Well, neither defence looking at all confident at the moment. Once again, Malatoli picking that up. Kenneth Malatoli had some ex experience of uh, European club football when he played for Secle Bruges. Seven years there, in fact. Wester hop out of his uh, bench there, hopping up and down, and we had the Henry Kasperjak, the coach of the Ivory Coast. He was sent to the stand in the semi-final when we were playing Nigeria. As things got rough, and Amakachi considered he might have got a free kick out of that. Daniel Amakachi, who made his debut in this tournament at the tender age of 17. This is where I said uh, Nigeria don't have the fluency that we saw from the Gold Coast in midfield. So what they try to do is play balls just beyond the defence, get the running power of the likes of Yakini, and that was Amaliki, the goal scorer, trying to fend it through to him. I think he's going to get a free kick out of that as well.
Yeah, it's very late tackle there. Tackle there by Malatoli. Two Malatolis playing in this. Mordon Malatoli and number 12, Kenneth Malatoli. Well, again, I hope you were watching our coverage of Nigeria playing because in the very first game against Gabon, Yakini scored the most amazing free kick. Powerful, curving, unstoppable. So, he might have a go at this one again. Hovering round it, and uh, this time it was Okocha who tried it. There's a the defence breaking, Finidi away wide right. Picked up here by Iroha. What a great little goal he scored in the semi-final. Finidi, little spin in that though. All Nigeria at the moment. And the ladies tackle again. I think he'll recover from that all right. The crowd vastly enjoying this. Free kick to Nigeria, taken by Okocha. Austin Okocha plays in the Bundesliga for Eintracht. What a powerful player he is. He doesn't exactly introduce subtlety into the game, but I think the whole Nigerian uh, philosophy is based on uh, strength, backed up by undoubted skill. I'm not saying they don't have that, they most certainly have. But at the basis of it is powerful running. Played by Malatoli. Well, I think they'll be missing the influence of Stephen Keshi, the Nigerians at the back. He's been troubled by a chronic knee injury, managed to recover for this tournament and then sustained a thigh injury, which has put him on the bench this time. And I think the very sight of an experienced player like that on the bench, knowing that he could come on and... and uh, Tighten up defence if Nigeria were in the lead must be comforting to his colleagues. This is Joe Bualya, the brother of Kalusha. Broken up there, Okafor, the man who was brought in and pushed forward to Amaniki. His runs are proving promising now, Amaniki. Trying to get a little one-two from Amakachi, this is Yukini. As I said, I think a lot of scouts will be queuing up to get hold of Yakini if uh, he can be prized away from Setubal in Portugal. The only reservation you make about Yakini is he's 30 years of age, so if he wants to make any progress and go to one of the bigger clubs in Europe, it really has got to be now, as uh, the agent was telling John Fashioner the other night. Well, Zambia play a lot of this uh, neat, uh, football, but they don't have the penetration that Nigeria have. Oh, Yakini, roughly treated then. I think they're being told, no mercy for this man. The man going in on the tackle there, Harrison Chongo, 24 years of age. Well, I think the television director is quite fascinated by this coach. We haven't had a really decent view yet of uh, the British coach, Ian Porterfield, who's done an absolutely remarkable job with Zaire. This is the man at the back who was unceremonious in the way he treated Yakini there, Chongo. Headed high in the air by Malatoli. The play very untidy at the moment. Long high, way down to Amaniki. Okocha, trying a run and a little shot on his own. And I think he may have been put off by the fact that Yakini ran across his side division. Regular in that uh, Eintracht side. And some of the Bundesliga teams have been... But there, there's Ian Porterfield now. Right in the middle of the, the field. And he must have been... Uh, the bench, he must have been absolutely delighted with that opening goal by the Tanner. I think what must have pleased him was the fact that he realizes that Zambia 
will have to pull out all the stops in his game and utilize these uh, set positions like corner kicks and free kicks and it paid off for them there I make it uh, almost 15 minutes gone, one each in a game that's settled down into what looks to be at the moment a war of attrition in midfield nobody gaining supremacy there's Porterfield bit of a hero up in Sunderland of course for that uh, goal he scored in the FA Cup final well I remember it, ball on the thigh first and then prodded into the goal sort of goal he'd like to see one of his Zambian protégés score this afternoon and I've got to watch this man coming forward Iroha he set up and finished the move uh, Yakini at the back Yakini will certainly take advantage of little slips like that and a very mean look on his face there angry with himself I think uh, the angle was very fine indeed maybe not at all surprising it ended up like that only himself to blame though and this uh, rhythm in the background will go on the entire game what I liked about it, it didn't seem to reflect what was happening in the field there was a little bit of despondency about sets of supporters but their rhythm went on and on Well, Nigeria played a marvellous game, a very competitive game that went right to the end. Contrast of styles when they played in the semi-final against the Ivory Coast. And it should be recalled that Zambia beat the Ivory Coast 1-0. So that might be a gauge, a slight gauge as to how this game would go. Good play by Akocha. But look, hardly any support around him. Back to Iroha. Unique and um, Amunike just inside. And coming back deep, uh, Joe Balia. Well, they build up the moves very neatly, as I said. Punishing run there by Sakala. And I pointed out that uh, number 10 for Nigeria. Okocha did a lot of powerful work but here's Kalusha now Kalusha really is their star player PSV Eindhoven player another experienced man of course 30 years of age and I think he's made it clear that this will be his last tournament so it's an emotional occasion for him he the man who said they would be on their knees praying for the dead colleagues before this game. And Porterfield's influence obviously telling players in that position to think their way through a game. They're not giving the ball away easily. They're trying to be creative and productive every time they get the ball in midfield. And that's a very good sign for them. Then I think uh, he got a knock in the face, Morden Malatoli. A cosmopolitan crowd in to see this, and oh yeah, you can see that uh, knock just above the left eye. And given the FIFA regulations, they'll have to stop the bleeding, and perhaps he's going off to get a stitch in it. Well, there have been a lot of stretcher cases in this tournament not so much because of the seriousness of the injuries but they wanted the players tended too quickly and let the play flow and that's not a bad idea Emma Kachi on the far side Aguafel, Yakini, can he bet it back? Oh, just off the line and the goalkeeper is very fortunate and the trouble for Nigeria there is Yakini had come so quickly forward the support wasn't there when it was needed. And the most fortunate James Firian goal. 
Remember, they've just conceded their first uh, goal in this tournament. Amonike. That was the goal scorer. The first player to score against Zambia in this tournament. His second shot. He didn't get it cleanly enough, though. And once again, Yakini up to give support. Well, I think you'll find Iroha here trying to come forward when he thinks it's safe enough to do so. Brilliant play by Okocha. Amaniki. I thought he was being held back there. That could be a penalty kick. Well, the referee waving play on there. Now watch this again. He was being impeded to start off with. Now the referee was right on top of that. But quite frankly, in more cases than not, I think a referee would have given a penalty kick for that. There's no doubt there was a collision. And I think there's cause for the Nigerians to be angry about that one. I think by normal standards, the referee would have pointed to the penalty spot. There's the stitching, I think. Uh, and the protection. There he is, Pele, snubbed by Yo Haviland in the United States at the World Cup Finals draw, but still perhaps the most popular footballer in the world. And justifiably not because of his prowess in the field as such, but the demeanor, stature of the man as an ambassador of goodwill for football everywhere. And he's also made a bucket too doing it as well. Yakini. Ooh, too obvious, but Zambian defense not coming for that quickly enough. Okocha. But on the Zambians fighting for every ball. Well, on he comes again. The courage of Mordon Malatoli. Plays his football for Nkana Red Devils. And there's a bit of redness about uh, his face and that wound that he received. Coaching staff of uh, Zambia, a bit concerned about their player, but I think he'll struggle on. I now make it with play 21 minutes, still one each. Yakini gets that back. Played away by Sakala. Trying to get that ball down to Sayaleti up front. Sweeping at the back, though, is Okafor, the immediate replacement for Stephen Keshi. Remarkable record uh, Keshi has. I'm quite sure if Nigeria are leading, they'll bring him on in this game as a tribute to his staying prowess and his stature, because this would be his fourth African Nations Cup final. Loud shout there for the defense to come right across. At the back, Okafor. That's precisely what Nigeria tried to do. If they're hemmed in like that, they try to find Yukini or Finidi or Amokachi up front. Got away by Litana, the goal scorer. Very good in the air indeed, as we saw at that goal. They're trying to get as many players forward as they can there. The shot, as it uh, came in there from the player I was mentioning, Saileti, left almost on his own up front. Well, I think there'll be a bit of controversy about that man. Lim Ki Chong from Mauritius, the referee. He seemed to think no penalty, just uh, turned away from it. And now the Nigerian coach, Clemens Westerhoff. Got to watch uh, the man at the back there, Litana. This time they do watch him. Away comes Daniel Amokachi.
looking towards uh, Finidi but nowhere near him and indeed Finidi has had absolutely no service in this game at all Loud whistling in the crowd there. Giro has scored two goals, the second of which was a, a real beauty. Throw to Zambia. The score at the moment, if you're joining us and you're watching Zambia in the green against Nigeria, the favourites in the white. In the final of the African Nations Cup, the score is 1-0. Two goals coming in the first five minutes. And away they break again. I'm a catcher to Yakini, who's brought down. No doubt about that. Litana, the opening goal scorer, may well get a booking for this. Neatly pushed through and Yakini getting the treatment. And Ian Porterfield has obviously read the danger of this man. Well, you wouldn't need to be a, a genius to work that one out. And he's been very closely marked. The treatment has been pretty rough, to say the least. And there's another free kick. Now, I don't know what's going through Yukini's mind. Is he going to try it from way out? Comes forward, bulleted in marvellous shot. I doubt if there's anywhere in the world you will find a player who can hit the ball with such power from such a tight position like that and keep it within the target zone. And that's why I said scouts will be queuing up to get this man. He's got a good three years left in him of football. At the age of 30, there's a header down. What a marvellous player he is, first on the ground, then in the air. And that's what uh, Zambia have to face all afternoon. The game seemed to have died a death in the last 10 to 15 minutes. Not Nothing really very creative in midfield, and then suddenly this man busts and explodes on the scene like that. And having said all of that, that was a very good save indeed by Firi. Finidi. Ajax will be delighted to get this man back into the side. Bit of pushing and shoving going on. Well, that's putting a quick uh, shot of him there. I wonder if he's uh, marveling at the skills of the man I've been talking about. The organization of this uh, Zambian defense after an awful opening, I have to say, I must admit. They looked a bit amateurish in the first five minutes with the defense, but they've tightened up considerably, and they have to. And sweeping up the back there, Okafor, positive move by him. Away by Chiyangi, playing at the back of that defense, as I said. And so, 28 minutes gone by my watch, still one each, still very even. After that wonderfully flowing start, two goals in the opening five minutes. Oh, there's the opening again, and that uh, was uh, Malatoli. And somehow or other, little gaps appeared in that Nigerian defense. Look at that. Malatoli getting right underneath it, though. He'll be annoyed with his defenders. The impassive faces of uh, people who might, uh, I think, as uh, Zambians, I think, might be 
a little bit worried about how this game is going because Nigeria had that awful start and then they struck back very quickly within a couple of minutes. And now Yukini is beginning to look awesome. And what they're now doing is uh, giving the ball as much as they can to Amakachi and Okocha in midfield. And the tactics to bring them down a little crude to say the least. Taking by Olase in midfield, Sunday Olase. At the back, Malatoli. A note of caution, I think, has uh, crept into the game now. That's a bit of ball. Amuniki, Yakini up. Now, I think he was complaining that in the middle of that sandwich, he was impeded. Now, watch it again. The two players with him. No, no, I don't think so. And a look of grim determination on that face. Exactly 15 minutes by my watch to have time. Now, Finidi. Just broken up there by Chiyangi. Oh, he can't afford to make mistakes like that. Fustato Kocha looking for a scoring position. Finide. Beautiful headed away though by Malenga, by Malatoli. Another counter attack, which uh, unfortunately for Zambia, any of these attacks have just been a little bit uh, ponderous, allowing the Nigerians time to get back quickly. This is Sunday Olise and the Nigerian midfield beginning to put it together again. Amaniki goes away just a little too much though. While the commentators from around the world might be asking the same sort of questions. Why, for example, the Nigerians are not using the pace of Amaniki, their goal scorer, the man who scored the equalizer. And more often we saw that little spurt that he produced there. And they're blessed, of course, with great width, because on the other side, you've got uh, George Finidi. No threat at the back. The sweeper there is Okafor, the captain. Amokachi, stretching out for it, Olese, Iroha. Well, proud to be here, I think. And so the beat goes on, just under 15 minutes remaining of this first half. Still one each. Play bogged down in midfield. No fluency at the moment. Saletti tries to go away. Very closely marked by Oche. Commentators watching the monitors very closely for the replays in particular and I think one replay earlier on suggested to me anyway that Amoniki had been brought down in the penalty area and that Nigeria should have hit a penalty kick. It's all a matter of opinion though and referees don't have the advantage of slow motion replays. Taken there by Okafor to Egwoben. Brought into the side uh, from the team that played against the Ivory Coast. There he is. Yukini had come deep for a change. Played away by Mulenga. And I think ominously for Zambia, they're simply not putting enough pressure on this uh, Nigerian defence. And I think we saw a glimpse of Bobby Charlton in the commentary box, which of course he does excellently as a summariser, doing it for one of the African services. As I said before the game started, I was talking to John Fashionu, who said this game reminded him of the circumstances he played in in 1988, Wimbledon Liverpool Cup final. Everybody thought Liverpool would win, and of course, Sanchez got a goal for Wimbledon. 
to win one nil and he's so close even though he's nigerian he's so close to the zambian side and he feels they have the spirit to bring off a surprise here high up and under thank you here by kalusha not been seen much of the game he is uh, something of a veteran compared to his younger colleagues giving uh, some of them nine years there he is uh, that's uh, kalusha doesn't have that little spurt any longer but he does get a free kick in a very interesting position indeed so free kick now they don't have of course uh, an Amakachi or a Yakini or an Akotcha as far as we know to take these kicks Peter Rufai from Dutch football and goal go ahead Eagles and it will be Kalusha to take this underneath it all the way scored five goals in the African nations disappointing finish though the crowd uh, we don't have the official figure yet but it's somewhere in the region of 30 to 35,000 and of course <laughs> it would have been filled the capacity if Tunisia had remained in the tournament at any length Olise determined to take this uh, quickly. Well, on the bench, of course, we have the notable figures of Samson Siasia for Nigeria, who plays his football in FC Nantes. But significantly, no place for Victor Ikpiba. However well he's been playing for Monaco. Just doesn't get on with the coach. Well, you could see Peter Rufai had that shot from Kalusha well covered. But at least the Zambians have had two clear shots at goal in the last three minutes. And that is heartening. Up and deep and Amakachi lets that go all the way through and we'll see nothing of the front men in the past five minutes simply not getting the service they're having to carve out something themselves Okocha has disappeared significantly for Nigeria in midfield now this is the man I think who could really make them tick if he can get balls played in behind the defense then uh, number 11 Emmanuel Amiki man who plays his uh, club football in Egypt does have the pace to penetrate this defense eight minutes remaining of the first half still one each quickly conceded corner kick there and I think the goalkeeper was in two minds whether to come for that or not so corner kick and they'll have to keep their eyes on Yukini Amokachi Away in the far side, Fididi. That's a clear head of the goal. And you know, that Zambian defense ought not to allow that. Up and high and straight into the arms of Fididi. Yakini brings that down and I think uh, a kind of half-hearted or choked attempt to appeal for a penalty kick there. I just get the feeling though that sooner or later he's going to get the breakthrough. Hooked on there by Iroha and I think the flag up on the other side. Nice little turn that 
Kalusha brought down though, he's been marked very tightly indeed. Egbo Ben following him right across the field. Still one each. Six minutes of the first half left. Up deep and well away. There's a little opening, too many white jerseys around him though. Ochi getting his foot to that. Amokachi, back to Egwaben, looking for Finidi. Long and deep towards Yakini, but the goalkeeper's there. Well, the play in the last 15 minutes, rather disappointing. Certainly Nigeria have the artillery up front, but the powder is dry at the moment. It's uh, a matter of they're not getting that ammunition. Stiff breeze blowing this afternoon. Nice laid back to Kalusha, tries to get a shot in, side net, Rufai had his eyes on that all the way. Balanced himself well before making that shot, but I think he was finding it difficult to get a, any space there at all to shoot. And I think uh, Finidi is about to be taken off. That may come as a surprise to you because you perhaps have not noticed anyway that Finidi is on the field. He's been wholly uh, ineffectual. I don't know whether he's carrying an injury or not. Doesn't seem to be too happy. But anyway, Samson Siasia comes on, the player from FC Nantes in France. Finidi has done absolutely nothing in this game. He has a very good reputation. Very reputable player in the Dutch league for Ajax. But uh, almost entirely anonymous in this game. Nicely brought down there by Sakala, but they're up on them very quickly, Nigeria. And there is brought down, that surely is a booking. It really must be. I did point out that Eminiki did have a pair of legs that would take him away from defenders, except if they tackle like that. Really getting forward very quickly. And the trouble is he's had virtually no service. Open to scoring. And a goal, of course, coming from his penetration. To take this, Austin Okocha. Beautifully away there by Malenga. And this defense is holding out. They've only conceded one goal in the tournament. And that after five minutes, of course, from the boot of Amoniki. Yellow card came up there as we suspected. And Zambia are containing them in midfield. It's not pretty to look at, but it's an effective performance. They're closing down, they're working hard, scurrying about. And that, of course, I think was the principal characteristic of the play in the earlier game. Just lacking the touch of the unexpected in the breakaway. Nigeria have been largely untroubled in defense. I make it about uh, two and a half minutes to half time. Still one each. Nigeria, who have won this trophy once before against Zambia in the green, who are going for it for the first time ever. I think that uh, time fits in with mine. One minute remaining. One each. 
And this would be a fine time to score a goal. That's exactly what Yakini did in the game against the Ivory Coast, getting the equaliser just before half time. Fed to him by Finidi, who's now gone off. Let me remind you. And the tackle there by Sandy Olise. And as I pointed out, a very strong European club influence in the side. The goalkeeper in Dutch football, Amaniki. Uh, an exception to that, of course, playing in Egypt. Where goes Zambia, Kalusha. Neat little ball played out there to Bualia. Malatole wins a corner kick now. That was the kind of uh, structure we wanted to see in Zambian counter-attacks. There was a little bit of flair behind that one. Instead of just playing the ball simply through the middle, it did get a little bit of width, and they win a corner. And it comes, shaping high, just beyond uh, Litana, the man who scored from a header in the first couple of minutes. Well, the game certainly settled down into this pattern of determined Zambian playing, defending, working hard in midfield against the occasional flamboyance of Nigeria. And it's ended up at this stage, right on half time, as uh, stalemate and Kalusha is suffering. And quite frankly, I thought the tackle on him there was late. There he is, PSV player. Well, he knows how to take it in the tough arena of European football. And I think there may have been a twist there more than anything else. Just feeling that knee gingerly. I think he's going to be all right. Kalusha, an experienced player. And the Zambians, of course, having to reconstruct their side. We're now a minute and a half into stoppage time. As Perry absorbs this game. Free kick. I think it should be pointed out, of course, this has been a very tiring tournament. We mustn't forget that. I think the legs are going to, to go very quickly on this turf. It's very lush, very heavy. Alec Ferguson of Manchester United was talking about how the Wembley turf can be very sapping. Well, so also can this be. The stadium, the Almanza in Tunisia, the halftime whistle goes. It is 1-0 in a very absorbing game. That's the halftime score. An explosive start by Zambia. Litana scoring excellent header in the air. And Amoniki getting the equaliser as Nigeria tried to prove that they have the capacity to come forward and score almost at will. Except that after that, Zambia settled in, defended extremely well, worked very hard in midfield. And although occasionally we saw the real potential threat of Yakini. I'm sure one of the most dangerous uh, forward runners in the business in world football. He was marked very closely indeed by an excellent Zambian defence. Just now and again it looked as if he might uh, break them. But they haven't been able to do that and very significantly Nigeria have taken off George Finidi and brought on uh, Samson Siasia. This was the drooping header that provided the ammunition for Amaniki to push in the equalizer. Yakini doing all the hefty fundamental work there. And I think just missed about 10 seconds of that game whilst we were on commercials there. Uh, welcome back to the second half of Nigeria against Zambia live from the Almansa Stadium in Tunisia. The score at halftime 1 0. Two goals scored in the first five minutes. The first by Litana in the air, a header, and the equaliser by Amoniki from uh, Nigeria. Well, somebody, I'm not quite sure who, and I'm not uh, exactly sure it precisely when, but somebody around about the time that the Cameroon were entrancing us all in the World Cup in Italy, 
posited the proposition that an African nation would win the World Cup final by the turn of the century. Well now, if you uh, been watching the earlier games of this tournament, you might have thought that proposition was highly fanciful. On the other hand, there have been some of the games from the quarterfinals on when we've seen the real potential of African football as Zambia pushes forward, including the strong performance of Nigeria twice in this tournament, when it doesn't seem so preposterous at all. One thing is very clear from this tournament, the African nations have learned how to defend and sometimes it's forgotten that if the Cameroon knew how to defend well, then he wouldn't have lost that famous game they had with England. And Zambia certainly proving good organization, except they can't cut there. Zambia in the lead, a couple of goals now for Amanike. And like any defense, well organized, occasionally licking and really exposed there as Amaniki picked his spot in the net. Well, we had a marvelous start to the first half, and now a repeat. Only one man at the back there, left on his own, Malatoli, the goalkeeper, a superb goalkeeper, quite exposed. And Nigeria, the favorites, are now 2-1 up. Catching that defense very cold indeed now. Can Zambia come back? I think what Nigeria proved at the start of the first half was if you take a, a punch in the chin very early on, you've got to come not staggering back, but with a lot of purpose, and that's exactly what they did. Pushing the ball forward up to the pace of Amaniki. I did say at the end of the first half that he would turn out to be something special. That's the coach, Clemens Westerhoff. And Zambia have now got to push forward. They've done remarkably well to get to the stage of the tournament, given the tragic circumstances of a year ago, losing all their, or most of the World Cup squad. Well, to back to the theme, I think uh, the African nations quite rightly have learned how to organize the defenses. On the other hand, we cannot expect them to be playing like Cameroon in every game that they play. I think uh, that's just expecting a little too much. So what they're providing is solidity marked by brilliant individual touches by the likes of Yakini there. And number two, preparing to take this Egwa then from uh, Courtois in the Belgium second division. Another goal by Nigeria at this stage, and I think all hope of Zambia pulling something off here would go. Nicely touched on there by Ekocha. Now they're beginning to trap. Can he lay it off? Amakachi. Went too wide though. Well, we've seen Amakachi doing this so well for Bruges in the Champions League last year. Okocha trying some of his skills. Played out there by Malatoli. A really explosive start to the second half. This is Malatoli, the other one, the defender. As I said, left entirely on his own there. Somehow or other, I think Zambia have got to pull one back in the next 15 minutes. Malatoli. Finding it very difficult to open the play up on that side. Tall figure of Malatoli again. Now Sakala. I think he was looking for a 1-2. This is uh, Salietti who's come back deep. And the poor ending to all of that.
So, if you get good organization, you get the, the flair in midfield and the power up front, you get a very potent uh, combination, and that is what Nigeria are heading for in the World Cup in the United States. Amokachi. Much more of Nigeria at the start of this half in midfield. Going now, I think, for the killer punch. And then he could settle in as Yakini. He can't be shrugged off the ball. The goalkeeper does well. Yakini still has it, and the referee weighs play on. Oh, that's a perfect illustration of just how difficult Yakini can be. Now, three times he looked as if he had lost the ball and fought back so well to keep it. Up he gets, and the ball just skidding away from him eventually. But the problem for Zambia now is that whilst the game has been based in the first half, on very deep defense and getting their midfield players back very quickly they've now got to push forward and that could be fatal against Yakini and I think uh, he gets a free kick this time mind you he had to get it by the law of averages because some of the tackling on both he and uh, Aloniki in particular has been rather rough and quite frankly I think uh, Aloniki should have had a penalty kick in the first half so Nigeria leading by two goals to one and if you've been watching our coverage you will have seen that Yakini scored a free kick against Gabon from roughly this uh, position bulleted it round the defense right into the top corner a remarkable free kick Westerhoff looking primly on he's not taking it a coach this time brilliantly saved Totally missed by Amakachi though. I think uh, the Nigerians accrue the benefit from Amakachi and his runs from midfield. And that's the player I talked about, Okocha, who tried them a uh, couple of free kicks in the first half. I think they're trying to vary it a little. Yakini whilst he scored that goal, a brilliant goal, had uh, a couple of very bad efforts against the Ivory Coast in the semi-final and that's why I think uh, the coach has decided to vary the play a little. You're watching Nigeria leading by two goals to one in the African Nations Cup Final in Tunisia. Again, Zambia in the green. There's the Zambian coach in Porterfield, thoughtful as ever, talking and thinking his way through this game. And let me repeat, it is absolutely marvelous for Zambia to have got here, given that that air crash deprived them of a real crop of uh, genuinely mature and talented players. So in a sense, they, their cup final is in getting here. All credit to them. John Fashion, who I was talking to before the game, was saying that the, the Zambian coaches were quite convinced the Nigerian defense was uh, leaking a little bit because it was rather aged. Well, Stephen Keshi hasn't played from the start he's on the bench he's 32 years of age almost 33 in fact and I think the Nigerians will have to look at that defense before they go to the States so in its place of him is Uchena Okafor younger player and that Nigerian defense was caught cold in the first uh, three minutes when Letana came up and out jumped the defense to score the opening goal but now they're trailing by two goals to one Zambia Daniel Amakachi still to put one in the net here in this tournament
Zambia still playing carefully and thoughtfully in midfield somewhat the same way that the Ivory Coast did although I don't think Zambia have quite the talented players they had in midfield the Ivory Coast as you might know if you watch the highlights won third place game free kick and to Nigeria right on the touchline oh referee said it's a throw Sounded a sharp uh, whistle blow for the free kick. Now, Kalusha. Well, I feel sorry for Saletti. Saletti up front there. He's been largely left on his own, Saeed Saletti. He's a young player. Well, of course, that is forced upon a manager. <clears throat> and he... Um, he does need a little bit of support around him and it hasn't come in this game. They've been relying on him to try and pick up a breakaway. But they are crowning midfield as you can see. Making it difficult for Nigeria to get going again even though they're trailing by two goals to one. This is the player I was talking about. Sayeti. Back to Chiyangi. Kalusha. Kalusha is the genuine playmaker in the side. Malatoli. Good run by Malatoli. Forward for a 1 2. And I think wins a corner kick. Brave player who took a stitch on the head or just uh, on the eyebrow in the first half. Although he has been booked in this game, he doesn't take prisoners that bad. Goes for the short one now. Is Lee Tanner in for it? He is indeed. Well, courageously trying to put the pressure on Nigeria now. Run forward here by Chiyangi. Nobody backing him up though. They've got to watch the break here. Now there's a little ball through that. Looks good. Sayeti out to the side. Could this be the equalizer? No. Great save. Rufa is in there. And was a, a push. Well, as I expected, they got the big man forward. And Kalusha coming in there. Laid it off to the side. And out came Peter Rufai to foil him really deserving an equalizer for the way they've come back at Nigeria but um, they cannot miss chances like that they built that up beautifully they did get enough players forward even though it is going to be dangerous to leave themselves exposed at the back That's a free kick. And we're now seeing much more of Zambia. Malatoli brought down. That was quickly read by the defense. Hooked away there by Iroha on the far side. Now the breakaway in Amakachi doesn't have the control. Doesn't seem to be as skilled in these breakaways as uh, Yukini. And uh, nothing very much in midfield of Samson Siasia, who replaced George Finidi. And that was a scything movement, very late indeed, free kick. I make it exactly 15 minutes gone in the second half. Nigeria leading by two goals to one. Well, there was the movement, he reached out, side forward like that. I think an act of uh, desperation. Well, I thought Yukini was uh, bumped in the back. The referee is being rather charitable, I think. Oh, he's annoyed, and Westerhoff uh, cannot believe that decision. Ochi's got to watch it. 
I think he felt uh, one of his colleagues should have come up and uh, give him support. We've had uh, Mulenga going off. Mulenga for Zambia has gone off. And Mamba is on now. Came on as a substitute in the semi-final as well. Played very well. They want uh, a lot of running in midfield now. Well, all the better football coming from Zambia in this last five minutes. Yakini has to come back deeper. Try to pick the ball up himself. Starved of service in the last five minutes and a bad shot there. Way off target. Sunday Olese. Well, if I were the Nigerian coach, I'd be slightly concerned at the moment. The fluency has got out of Nigerians' play. There's no great menace about the Zambian attack, but they are getting possession a lot. And they might just sneak an opening. Push forward there as uh, Zambia again crowding midfield, trying once more to get it through to Salieti, but you could see clearly on his own again. And by the way, there's nothing unusual about this pattern. I've watched Nigeria play in these uh, games in this tournament. And for long spells, they seem out of it. They seem to be drifting away, the concentration lapsing, a lack of possession in midfield. And then suddenly, you'll get a nice touch by a Akotcha, sudden run by Amakachi or Olase, finding Yakini, and bang, the explosion happens. And don't let it be said, I haven't warned the Zambians about that. But, at the moment, Nigeria seem quite content. They don't look at all ruffled. Give the impression that only two to one up. That they have this game well under control. And that is a risky exercise. Zambia still sticking to the game plan of having that one man up there, but a very good second half performance by Kalusha. Very brave one too at the age of 30. The legs are lasting after a very tiring tournament. And he's starting to drift away from his markers. Corner kick. Oh, it's going a begging. And the crowd murmuring in sympathy there with Latana, the man who scored that opening goal awkward little bounce there and it's from that position almost the same that he got his goal just couldn't quite get enough on at that time still Zambia courageously battling 2-1 behind now you're kidding this is the break I was talking about there we are one miss But there may be others. It happens so frequently. And I think uh, from that angle, it was difficult to tell at first. The goalkeeper had got a touch on that. I think not eventually, but he stretched himself out. Well, that's the pattern I predicted. That breakaway coming out of nothing and Zambia left the door wide open at the back. Interestingly enough, whilst I've been praising Yakini rightfully, in the second half against the Ivory Coast, he missed no fewer than five run-ins and go like that. 
It strikes me that Yakini is a much better player in a, a tight situation when he doesn't have too much time to think. When instinct takes over, like that superb goal he scored against Zaire, the second one. So that might be a little flaw in his play. He just uh, just gets caught in two or three minds when he's running in and goal like that. Down the line it goes. That'll be a free kick. Uh, which way? Well, they were both at it by my mind, but the referee Lim Ki Chong. Right on top of it. He goes to the uh, United States, of course, in the summer to be a referee there. I wouldn't say he said a, a superb game. I think he should have given Nigeria a penalty kick. And it's been a little bit lenient. Now, Kalusha. A little hitch kick, but the referee will blow for that. Quite illegal. Free kick, and I make it. Uh, we're just about halfway through the second half. Nigeria still leading as we watch this game direct from the El Mansa Stadium in Tunisia, leading by two goals to one. And that's the profile of a very stern-looking Dutchman, who I think realized that had he lost this game or were he to lose it to get the tense right, uh, I think he would be out of a job. I know how Zaire miss a player like uh, an Amakachi or a, a Yakini. The football is dainty and organized, but they don't bustle enough to break down this defense. The Nigerians physically very much stronger. And I think this is where they're going to score in the metaphorical sense in the United States. They'll like the climate, they'll drive forward, they've plenty of energy. They've got lots of stamina, and as you can see, they can mix it. Hard down there, this time Malatoli. And the yellow card. Back he goes, everybody, I think, going into the box, but they decided on the short one, played by Shiyangi. Little touch on Sayedi controls that very nicely. Iroha. Well, Zambia have been playing so well that Iroha, who is a very good attacking fullback, scored perhaps the defender's goal of the tournament against the Ivory Coast. He's been lying deep in his own half. That's what I meant by the lack of Yakini or Anama Kapche. They've got trickery up there. Oh, Kalush uh, Malatoli shielded that well. And wanting players to, to come up beside him. Almost 25 minutes gone of the second half. Still 2 1 for Nigeria. The game, of course, will go to extra time and penalties if Zambia wear this defense down. And the uh, Johnson Bualya coming on. Johnson Bualya, who played uh, in all of these games, coming off the bench, replacing the other Bualya. Related, of course. 26 years of age, Johnson Bualya. Westerhoff signaling instructions there. Oh, I think you'll be happy if Nigeria can hold on to this, like the skills of Amakacha. And there's a driving shot there. Samson Siasia. Now, about five minutes ago, I said he'd been absolutely anonymous in the second half. And he stepped out, out of the shadow into the sun with that blistering shot a very good save indeed the man from FC Nantes in France and yes a nod of the head of agreement with that from Westerhoff 
No, all the way underneath it. And so 20 minutes of this game left. The Nigerians still lead. And two warnings to Zambia that whilst they've had much more possession in midfield, that they have this kind of power, the shooting power, the running power. We've seen it from um, different sources, Siasia, Yakini, and Okocha. Sakala. Well, that's what I said about the daintiness of the football, but it's broken up in that rugged defensive wall of Nigeria. Better. This is the skilled man in the team of Kocha. Looks for the one two. It's a great effort there. Oh no, that's more like Nigeria. Wonderful little run, great control. He had left his man for dead in midfield. Got the one two on, and then a dreadful finish there by Amaniki. This is where it all started. Drifting away from defenders and now the attack by Salietti at the other end and the game has come alive again after all that uh, neutral benign play in midfield. The counter attack but I think very significantly note this name. Austin Okocha, 21 years of age, from Eintracht Frankfurt, of course, in the Bundesliga, whom you saw with that delightful skill in midfield and a powerful run forward. I think um, he will be a notable figure in the World Cup. He's not the household name as Okocha, tired now, and I think he was nursing an injury before this game, wrist by the coach. He'd had an ankle knock, uh, so we are told, and I think it's decided that he's tired and brought off because he's been mixing it very well in midfield. Yakini, this is the part I was talking about. A little bit selfish there. Could have laid it off. Yes, the ball went over. That's the time we have left. Nigeria leading by two goals to one, and Zambia now if not exactly throwing caution to the wind have got to be a little more adventurous if they want to save this game that's more like it played in now where's Sayeti now Rafai looking very good the 30 year old goalkeeper from go ahead Eagles leaping high above everybody here beautifully curved ball there by Sakala Running the outside, high up. where's Yakini for this, no, the goalkeeper's there. And I think Philly may just have taken his eye off the ball to watch that uh, Burnley figure come in on top of him. Now I think the pace has increased by Zambia here. They realise the clock is against them now, 2-1 behind. Chongo. Not enough green jerseys in there though. Now they've got it. Try to play it wide. There's a little one-two well read there by Okafor. Bit of pushing Zambia trying hard to battle the way through. And they lack just a little bit of subtlety there. That was easily read by the Nigerian defense. Nigeria doing absolutely nothing in midfield just now. They're, all they're doing is defending. And what they'll hope to do is hit the long ball towards Yakini. Well, that's a dangerous one. Great save, isn't it? No. Brilliant piece of play there by Zambia. An instinctive save there. Hooked round by Malatoli. And down at the second effort there by Rufai. 
Now this is the save that really mattered. The first one as Malatoli got his toe to it. And then he gets the protection of the referee. Very good piece of goalkeeping. No time to think there. Unfortunate for Malatoli. And when time's running out, so also sometimes truly does your luck. Beautifully aware there by by uh, Bitana at the back now. Amakachi looks for the little space through the defense. Well read by Latana. Now there's a little space to operate in here. This is a really brave effort by Zambia. Westerhoff screaming at his defense. And look how Nigeria are backtracking. That's better play to the edge of the box. Shot to go off the post. What a wonderful shot that was. And that man is getting grayer by the minute. Simply superb. And oh dear, Zambia really deserve an equalizer for the way they played. Of the way Kalusha hammered that in. But here's a breakaway. They had to watch. Amokachi ran out of steam. And I'm not quite sure what Westerhoff is trying to indicate. Look at that shot, almost taking the woodwork away. And isn't that cruel? I did say a few seconds earlier, the time runs out and so also does your luck when you're pushing a game. Well, that would be enough to bring tears to the eyes of any coach. But on the other hand, he must be proud of the way that Zambia have fought back. They might have been killed off early in the game, losing that vital goal so early in the second half. And uh, Egwaben, the defender, booked, I think, wasting time. As I said, he, he plays in the Belgian second division. The referee quite unperturbed about his uh, look of descent. Look to the edge and ooh, look at the gap in that defense away out in the left. There was no cover there. Amaniki was hovering in the background. Now the crowd roaring Zambia on. Every neutral in the state stadium has become a Zambian supporter. Listen to the support behind them. Squares the ball, but a cluster of white jerseys there. We're now into the, almost into the last 10 minutes still. Zambia coming forward. Surely a free kick, referee ways play on. And Zambia seems to be now to be playing on the crest of an emotional tide. I think that is giving them that extra adrenaline. Crowd roar them on. There's a little touch at the edge of the penalty area. And Nigeria desperately clearing. And Westerhoff is now like some crazed marionette out in the touchline gesticulating trying to get some life out of his team in midfield where they have largely disappeared 10 minutes remaining Zambia the fight of their lives now 2-1 down and everybody back for Nigeria defending oh this is stirring stuff by Zambia Amakachi these are the kinds of runs I was talking about by Amakachi. He either goes himself or knocks it away in front of Yukini, who'd been pushed back, and I'm sure Pele 
must be admiring the fighting courageous spirit of this side in green the crowd chanting Zambia as he still come forward Kalusha has had a marvellous second half up and under where's the goalkeeper they've got players forward headed away though Ochi got up there Yakini on his own look at the jerseys around him the crowd don't like it Yakini with it one burst from him and he could kill it off this is so typical Nigerian Amakachi hovering in the middle and tired legs though that defense may have they're holding out Neatly played round the side. What a marvellous job Ian Porterfield has done and Platini, Michel Platini enjoying this as the crowd roars Zambia on. Fighting to get this equaliser. In it comes, another effort this time. Back it come. Amakachi very deep indeed. Yakini nowhere near it. Nigeria simply giving the ball away. That white wall, I think, is going to stay there to the end of the game. They're not going to be trying anything too adventurous. And the favourites at the moment, in midfield anyway, being given the runaround. And there's still time for Zambia to save this game. Eight minutes remaining. This is where they've been very good. Working for each other in midfield. These long balls not so effective. They're better when they're playing the ball close on the ground. Knocking it about. I think it's going to be a nerve-wracking moment for both sets of supporters. Really is surprising, you know, when uh, Nigeria scored that second goal by Amonike, his second of the game. Not for one moment did I think he would end the last 10 minutes holding on like a prize fighter, groggy on the ropes. But that's the way it's turned out to be. Look at this fight by Zambia and he was pulled back there. Superb second half performance by Kalusha, number 11. And everybody in Zambia must be proud of them. Little push there, and I think, uh, well, I would have put it the other way, to be honest. Okafor sweeping up there for Nigeria. And so little of the game left. Malatoli will come up for this. In it goes. Corner kick. Right into the middle of the penalty area goes Malatoli. Right on the goal line. Kalusha to take it. Not such a good one that time. The pressure eased. It was played out there by Amoniki who'd come back way deep in defense. Listen to the whistling in the stadium now Yekini can he knock it back he chests the ball down he's got his course the woodwork he took the words out of my mouth that would have killed it stone dead now he chested it down brilliantly and it was here he took it too finely and if he had laid it back he had Amakachi just lying inside him And that would have really killed the game off. Zambia trying to fight back. We are now into the last five minutes. Yakini taking Samakachi this time, taking two players with him. And there are very tired legs out there. Especially the Zambians who found 
and dug deep down into hidden resources and found them and are playing on that extra high but it's still 2-1 The goalkeeper, James Philly. Well, I talked about tired legs. That looked like it there from that corner kick. The Kocha. Oh, there it's chested down again. Yakini wanted a goal himself, though. A little bit selfish. Wins a corner kick again. And you could see the way he chested it down. He wanted to put it in. Nobody else. Now four minutes left, still 2-1, and this will do Nigeria, they want the ball at this end, even if they don't get a goal, they want to keep it deep, deep, deep in Zambians' half. Siasia coming up for it at the back, hammered well away, but time is running out for them. I now make it exactly three minutes left. I don't think with the exception perhaps of uh, Kalusha in the second half, it would be fair to single out uh, Zambian players. It has been a total team effort. Ian Porterfield has done his homework well, beautifully organized, have closed the right players down and walked away. They lack a notable player, a notable goal scorer up front. And I think that at the end is where they might at the final hurdle fail. At the back, Litana. That is a very tight one though. Want to push forward, Chongo. I don't think they have anything to lose now. They really have to throw caution to the winds. Seconds remaining. Easily knocked away by Okafor. Nice touch by Amakachi. Yakini is very deep. Dalitana, who scored that goal. Now remember the Lateness of the Ivory Coast goal in the game. Game which went into penalties and I think it's going to be a corner kick. Yes, it is. They were unsure about it. We're in the last minute. Up it comes Lieutenant with a header across the goal and there's Rufai. Now, he won't want to send it downfield too quickly. Up from Malatol, he said, over the crossbar, and that might just be the last effort in the game. Could be a little stoppage time. Sweeping up at the back, Okafor. Well, Nigeria's best performances certainly coming against the Ivory Coast and Zaire, there's no doubt about that. Second half, very disappointing Nigerian performance, but they have held on to the lead. Free kick, they'll have to rush to take it. We're into stoppage time in the African Nations Cup final, as you can see. And that's a, a wise move, just hit it to the far end of the field. That's all they're required to do. Time is against them. We've seen a particularly courageous fight in the second half. Kalusha, tempting ball, just a trifle too near Peter Rufai. Well, whenever this man has been put to the test, he hasn't been found wanting. Good in the air and one or two good instinctive saves. Zambia, who have never won this trophy, are now playing in stoppage time. 2-1 down to Nigeria. 
Nigeria were beaten in the final in 1984, 88 and 90, but not this one. Nigeria are the new champions of Africa. Onto the field come their entourage of supporters, of officials, and there, their very tuneful support, Clemens Westerhoff, the coach who really must have been in tenterhooks throughout the second half, as Zambia had so much of the play, is now a relieved man. Off go the Nigerian players to celebrate.